Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our hope is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you say, Amen.
now and forever. A reading from Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. And the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The second reading is a reading from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am ready, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his, his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Christians has gone to Galatia. Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into this heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
Moses strikes the water with the staff, and the strikes this rock with the staff, and it breaks open, and water spills out. And the repeating of this miracle when Jesus is hanging on the cross confirmed the connection with the Exodus. That everything in the Exodus prefigured life as a Christian and the sacrament. That everything now that would be fed and watered from the ribbon side of Jesus is where eternal life would flow from. These are the streams in the desert. The water brought forth by God, the manna, the, the quail, the shade by day, the light by night, all the ways that he sustained them in that desert of sin, literally the name of it being the desert of sin, so that is our life to live by the streams in the desert. We wander in our own desert of sin. Even we who are washed in Christ and redeemed and made new are still trapped here until we leave the body and leave this world for the next. Until the resurrection and the new creation, until our bodily death here, we're not really done with the sinful world and all of the plagues of it. And so we live here. For the time that we have here, we live here in the desert, freed from bondage by Christ, just as they were freed from bondage to the Egyptians. Nevertheless, we wander in the desert. And there is no entering the promised land until the wicked generation is dead, just as during the Exodus, so now. And so we leave the body, we won't leave this world and head onwards to perfection. And so just like them, we wander free from bondage to sin and yet stuck. Stuck still in the desert of this world, doing the best we can to navigate it, or rather, to be navigated through it by the Holy Ghost. To be guided through this dry and parched land, and that is the nature of what a desert is, and it's a perfect metaphor. In a desert, there's very little life. Life as we know it needs water to survive. In the aridness, there's nothing but that which is dry and brittle and things don't grow. There's nothing to consume and there's nothing to drink. Deserts are places where everything goes to die. Deserts are the cancer of the world, eating away at a livable surface. Deserts are always growing, always spreading, desertification. <laughs> where the living Garden of Eden, long gone, faded into a world that is imperfect, so yet the all living things in the biosphere as we know it are steadily marching on their way to death. In the end, everything's a desert. Everything's dry and empty and lifeless. In the end, the bones break away into the dust of the valley like in Ezekiel. In the end, all things will perish. But there are streams in the desert. Just as it was before, so it was prophesied in Isaiah, there would be streams in the desert. Against our own sin, our own thirst, and the sin and debauchery of the world, living in the midst of all this, where do we find the streams? The streams in the desert are the sacraments, that which comes out of the sky, out of the water, out of the rock, miraculously during the Exodus, comes now to us from the font, from the word, from this altar hidden inside, with and under, bread and wine, the Eucharist, the real manna from heaven and the real water from the rock, that which cleanses and makes new. These are the streams in the desert, the things that water us and give us life, that drag us out of the sinful world, our sinful selves, our own guilt, our own shame, our own failures, and literally bring life back to the desert. Life back to the place in which it has decayed, where it has died, where everything is dry and empty and brittle. Jesus can make life grow again, planting inside each of us that fountain, springing up to eternal life that is the Holy Ghost, in regeneration, in baptism, in his word, in the sacraments. The streams in the desert will be those 72 and the 70 that go out to preach the gospel. Over 500 witnesses who will see the risen Jesus who will spread the gospel and people like Luke. Luke who will write down one of the gospels in writing. Luke who stayed with Paul until the end and didn't abandon him. Luke who was faithful unto death, being hung on an olive tree by those who hated the gospel, but even then fittingly on an olive tree. And the symbol, no less, of the Garden of Gethsemane of the resurrection yet to come. Luke would suffer unto death to be the one that preached about the streams in the desert where life is to be found. 
God pouring his grace onto the world, and he preaches and shares it with us. And where are the stream? They're here. Paul alludes to them in his epistle. It's kind of hidden in under those seemingly personal details of who went where, who to trust and not to trust, being left to the one he does trust. This is Christ. Paul says, bring me the books, especially the scrolls, and bring me my cloak. Ah, right there, hidden in plain sight, you see. The actual word for cloak is all, which is the name of the white thing that pastors wear under their chasubles. Paul is actually in captivity for the word of God, and even then, one of the final things he does is say, bring me the scriptures, bring me the books, bring me the hymnal, bring me the vestments, because there, even under house arrest, he will be preaching and sharing the gospel, the gospel that he is teaching and sharing with Luke, the gospel that will be recorded for us, the gospel that has been being preached in all the world since God first promised it in Genesis 3.15. And then here, this body of believers, the remnant of those who believe the word of God, here in his church, again, the piercing of his side, the body, the blood, and the water, here again, the streams in the desert, pouring out from this altar, this font, this place, to bring us the Holy Spirit to fill us, enliven, and quicken, and make us new, to drag us through the desert we languish in, to the other side, to keep us safe here and now during our exodus until we enter the Holy Land, that even now feeding and watering his people as if it's a new garden made for him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Christ would be their good physician of body and soul in every need, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all people in need or distress throughout the world, for all those to whom death is drawing near, and for us all, that when our last hour may come, we may depart this life in confidence of a true faith, a right, devout, and holy hope, and together with all the faithful, be seated at the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, strengthen, deliver, and preserve us. For to you alone we ascribe our glory, honor, and power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Let's do as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you
body and blood of Christ for you.
true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the true faith, even unto life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, and 